Welcome back, Pythonistas. I'm Professor Gallagher, and this is Circuit Python School. In this lesson, we're going to prove that you are electric, and we're going to detect that electricity by using the capacitive touchpads that are built into the CPB and CPX. So, if Python is your parcel tongue, let's code! Now, the CPB has seven capacitive touch pads. Those are the rings A1 through A6, plus the one labeled TX. Now, those don't just sense human touch. They can sense a pet's touch, and the electricity in the touch can be passed from whomever or whatever is touching the pad through any conductive material. Here are just a few examples. Conductive clay, metallic bows and ribbons, Velcro-style hook and loop tape, conductive elastic, conductive thread and fabric, copper tape, and conductive paint. And in fact, detection can be also transmitted through organic material. So if you clip a pad to a plant leaf, we can detect when that plant has been touched. I'm Groot. Now, Python doesn't normally have routines for touch detection, so we're going to import a library to work with touch. And this library is called Touch.io. And for our first foray into touch, we'll create three objects that can detect touch. We'll use the Touch.io's touch-in class for that, and we'll just pass in the name of the pad that we want to use. In this case, board.a1, board.a2, and board.a3. And after that, the touch pads work sort of like our buttons. We simply check to see if the touch in object for each of the three pads that we've set up has a dot value property that's true. And if that is true, that means that that touch pad has detected a touch. Now for starters, let's write some simple code. If we detect a touch on A1, we'll flash red, we'll play the cowbell, then we'll turn the lights off. If we detect a touch on A2, we'll flash orange, we'll play BD zone. And if we detect a touch on A3, we'll flash yellow and we'll play the electric high snare. So let's code this up. Now hopefully you saved your work from lesson 10. If you didn't, you might want to do that now. And I'm going to change the comment at the top of this to read lesson 11, you're electric. Then at the end of these import statements, we're going to add another one that says import touch IO. That brings in the library and all the commands and data structures to handle touch. Then just after I define button A and button B, I'm going to set up touch pads A1, A2, and A3 with touchpad underscore A1, that's just my variable name, equals touchio.touchin, that's the touchin class of the touchio library, and I'll pass in board.a1, and on the CPB and the Circuit Playground Express, that's a touchpad. Then I'm going to copy this entire line here, paste it down below twice, change the variable name to the second and third to touchpad a2 and touchpad a3, and I'll make sure that I'm passing in board.a2 and board.a3. Now in while true, I'm going to delete everything after the keyword if, but I'm going to type in a similar statement, that's if touchpad underscore a1 dot value colon, and then I'm going to set pixels dot fill in parentheses passing in all caps red, then I'll play underscore sound passing in drum underscore cowbell dot wave, and then I'll make sure that I turn my lights off with pixels dot fill and in parentheses black. Then I'm going to highlight these four lines here, copy them, paste them down below twice, and I'm going to change the second if statement to read touchpad underscore a2, I'll pass in pixels.fill orange, and if touchpad 2 is pressed, I'll play the sound bd zoom. Then for the third if statement, I'll make sure that says touchpad underscore a3, I'll set the pixels fill to yellow, and I'll play the sound elect underscore high underscore snare. Now we're ready to open the serial console, click on save, and let's try this out. Ho-ho, oh, nice work, Coder. I'm rocking along with you. And now you might think, hey, that sounds a little like a drum machine. And you bet it does. That's what we're going to build in the next lesson. So keep at it.